All right, howdy friends. Here we are again, College of Southern Idaho, the Evergreen Building on the Northwest side of campus. And we're in my classroom. Uh, and today we're going to do what might be the last mineral video. I haven't fully decided yet, um, but I wanted to do this one for sure because it's an important mineral. Uh, and there'll be a couple associated minerals we'll look at as well. And that's calcite, uh, which is a huge component of sedimentary rocks. Uh, but also shows up in some other rocks as well and is really common and so i think it's important to to look at calcite um, we may do another video or two on minerals i haven't decided yet but at some point either sooner or later uh, we'll switch into rocks and we'll start focusing on uh, each group of rocks and common rocks and um, ways to identify each one of those so uh, let's jump to it as we often do uh, so we're going to focus on our good friend calcite, which is calcium carbonate. So it's nothing more than calcium, carbon, and oxygen. Um, this mineral has a couple of unique properties that we'll look at, um, but this is the most abundant of all the carbonate minerals. So there's several groups of minerals that contain some element along with CO3, carbonate, uh, and this is, this is the most common one. Um, it actually has a, a less stable form, a, a, form, a high, high temperature form called aragonite, but we're not gonna focus much on that. Calcite's generally uh, kind of what you see. So this mineral um, makes up a lot of the shells and skeletons and organisms. So you can imagine then as those organisms uh, die, um, the shells and skeletons oftentimes are preserved, at least chemically, if not in whole, and that can get preserved in the rock record. And so we're gonna see that calcite is a common component uh, in many rocks that are formed from organic material. Uh, in terms of cleavage planes, it has a pretty distinct cleavage plane pattern. It has three cleavage planes, but not at 90 degrees. So it actually forms kind of a squished box, what we might call in geometry world, a rhombohedron. Um, and so I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. But three cleavage planes, remember cleavage planes will be shiny and reflective. Um, and somewhat flat or planar, uh, but it won't be at 90 degrees. So it will not make a perfect cube. It'll look kind of like a, a squashed box or a squashed cube. Uh, typically calcite's colorless or kind of whitish. Uh, you can get a little bit of coloring due to different impurities in it. So it can have a little bit of color, maybe a little bit of pink. I think I have one over here that's got a little bit of pink or purple in it. Um, and those are just due to some of the impurities. Um, Let's see, it is softer than glass, so it's, gonna, it's going to uh, be scratched by glass. It won't scratch glass itself. And then one of the big giveaways with calcite, one of the ways we identify it in the field or in lab settings is it is soluble, which means it reacts with any sort of weak acid. And so we'll be using um, our fun little bottles of dilute HCl. If you don't have this, uh, which probably is not commercially available at your local uh, drugstore or Walmart or something like that, um, you can also, I believe, use uh, vinegar. And that's a pretty good substitute. You should get a reaction to calcite with vinegar. You may not get it with some of the other carbonate minerals, um, but for calcite, you should still get uh, that reaction. So another important point, and we'll get to this later, is calcite is uh, soluble in even weak acids like the dilute HCl, but also rainwater. So when rain falls out of the sky, what actually hits the ground is a weak acid. And so anything with calcite gets dissolved. And this is fundamentally what forms caves in places like uh, Florida or Missouri, uh, parts of the Southeast, some of the caves in the West even. So any place you have calcite rich rocks and you have some rainfall, um, you'll have caves and other uh, features formed by caves. Uh, and then we'll look at a fun little party trick called birefringence, which is basically a, a kind of a, a double refraction thing. So if you have a nice pure piece of calcite uh, and you got some friends over and you want to show them uh, a cool trick one evening, you know, in your social circles, I can show you what birefringence is. And then a couple other carbonate minerals you maybe have heard of or that are out there, and this by no means is an exhaustive list. Uh, dolomite is calcium and magnesium, a carbonate. And then azurite and malachite are uh, copper carbonate. So these are copper ores, 
but they're carbonates uh, and they're brilliantly, uh, azurite's a brilliant blue, kind of a sky blue color and malachite's this very attractive green color. Uh, so let's look at a few pieces of calcite. Uh, I've got a nice little collection here, starting with this huge uh, sample that a gentleman gave me. I'm not sure where he got it. Uh, I should have quizzed him a little bit longer than I did. And then uh, he, he passed away pretty soon after he donated this to the college. But this is a huge cluster uh, of calcite crystals. Uh, typically, calcite will sort of present itself. Here's sort of the typical classic rhombohedron kind of shape. So you can see... Um, it looks kind of like a squished box. We can rotate it around. We can see um, those three cleavage planes. There's like a corner there. So I've got one cleavage plane there with my fingers, two there, and then top to bottom. Um, so it usually reflects the light. Can be colorless. You can see these colorless. This one's a little bit yellow. Uh, here's a sample that's got a little bit of kind of purple or maybe pink in it, but another nice piece of calcite. Um, so these are what the, the cleavage planes of, of it look like. And then of course, the fun thing that everyone gets excited about, uh, kids of all ages enjoy this, is if we put a drop on, on it, we get the, the strong reaction. So what's happening now is it's separating the calcium from the carbonate and it's releasing CO2. So it's just uh, putting CO2 gas uh, up into the atmosphere, which we don't need any more of, so I should stop this. But, uh, but that's the reaction. Um, is liberating CO2. Uh, and if we kept doing this, if we just kept putting a drop on this sample for uh, probably many hours, uh, eventually we would dissolve the sample. This is essentially what's happening when we get um, caves forming or rocks rich in calcite uh, dissolving over time. I've got my little paper towel. There's no, no beautiful mineral sample deserves to sit in a, in a bath of acid. Oh, let me show you the, the fun little party trick. Um, I think this was the best one. So birefringence is basically when uh, light passes through the mineral uh, because of those cleavage planes, those kind of rom that rhombohedral cleavage, what it does, let's see if I can zoom in and make this work. Um, hopefully you can kind of see that, but it makes the, the print, you can see the word calcite there is kind of uh, offset. So it actually shows um, this is birefringence. It's actually showing the print beneath the paper. That's pretty good right there. Uh, in two in two ways, it's like offset. So you can actually see the letters kind of doubled there, and each letter is kind of offset to the right. It looks like so. This is birefringence. You can look up more on it. Kind of a cool little physics thing. Uh, might be a fun little party trick. Kind of a not really an optical illusion. It's just good, clean, fun science. But. There you go, birefringence. Um, and then this is dolomite. Uh, dolomite, let me put the tripod up, that always is helpful. Sorry about the bad video here. So dolomite, there we go. Oh, one more thing, sorry. Adjusting the tripod, whoa. That's not what I wanted to do. Here we go. Okay, thank you. Uh, so dolomite will look uh, a lot like this. So. It has the same cleavage as calcite, so sort of these uh, this rhombohedron, kind of squished box shape. There you can see the angle's not 90 degrees, um, but it's a little bit more gray. And if you hit it with the acid, uh, what you'll see is it doesn't quite fizz. In fact, it's really not fizzing at all. Uh, maybe if you can see in there a little bit closer. Yeah, it's barely fizzing, or a lot of times what you can do is if you um, scratch it, uh, and kind of powder it a little bit, it will start to fizz a little bit. So that's, that's dolomite, um, grab the paper towel. And then the other ones I kind of brought in just for fun uh, are azurite and uh, malachite. So this is azurite, this kind of beautiful blue uh, sample here with uh, kind of the sky blue color. These are copper carbonates. Uh, another fun little piece of azurite there, a little bit deeper blue on that one. Uh, and this has a little bit of both, actually. This has azurite, uh, but you should be able to see some of the green in this as well. Um, and this is, uh, there we go, a little closer. This is malachite. Um, azurite and malachite kind of mixed together. And just because I brought it out, one more piece of malachite. Okay, so those are some of the varieties or other carbonate minerals in addition to uh, calcite. So what else can we learn about calcite in terms of its uh, occurrence in rocks? Well, you're not going to see it in igneous rocks 
unless it's occurring uh, in a vein or an amygdala. And here's a fun word for the day. You can use this with your friends at your next uh, social engagement. An amygdala is just a gas bubble or what we would call a vesicle that's been filled in by mineral material. So calcite will not form as a primary mineral in igneous rocks, but when you get water passing through it, if the water is rich in calcite, you could get calcite as a vein cutting through the rock or an amygdala. And that might look something like this. So here we have um, a piece of basalt, an igneous rock, and you can see these little holes here, um, and they're lined with some sort of mineral material. Uh, and if we hit that with the acid, hopefully we will see. Oh boy, I thought this one had calcite amygdules. So a little bit of a reaction there. Not as much as I thought. Let's see. What about this big one? There's a big one on this side. That one must be a zeolite. I thought I hit this earlier and it fizzed, so now I'm looking like quite the fool. Uh, there we go. There's some calcite in there. So there's some calcite filling in these uh, pore spaces, these cavities, these uh, old gas bubbles. And apparently some of these are not calcite. They're probably a, a clay mineral called zeolite, which is a common thing to see in some of these uh, igneous rocks or vesicles or as well. Okay, so sedimentary rocks, this is where the, the calcite really shines. It's a huge component in a group of sedimentary rocks called the carbonate rocks, limestones and dolostones primarily. So in fact, a limestone by definition is a sedimentary rock that's pretty much 100% made out of calcite. Um, but we also see calcite being a good cementing agent, so it'll actually hold together particles of sand or gravel. That's what we call the clastic sedimentary rocks, and of course we'll spend some time with our rock types in weeks to come. Um, but let me show you a couple of those as well. So here is a, a let me do the tripod again. That works better. Let me get my hands. Go. So here's a nice uh, limestone. Uh, and this actually has some chert nodules in it. We'll get to chert too, that's a different sedimentary rock. But sure enough, if you hit this thing uh, kind of anywhere with the acid, it goes crazy. Of course, on the chert, it won't because that's not a, that's not calcite, that's actually silica. Uh, but this is limestone, usually forms the bottom of the ocean. We'll talk about limestone later. Uh, another fun little limestone with some crinoid fossils in it. So there's a nice little limestone from Nevada. Again, strong reaction, totally full of calcite, chock full of calcite. Uh, and then just one more, this is a piece of travertine. So this is actually reeds and grasses and plants growing along the margin of a stream. That stream carries a lot of calcite because there's a lot of limestone in the, the hills nearby. Um, you can see a little hole right there. And this of course is just a very porous version of calcite, but again, it just goes crazy when you hit it with the acid. So totally made out of calcite. And then a couple of clastic rocks. So here's just a nice uh, conglomerate made out of big chunks of mostly rounded particles. But what we can see here is that the calcite, which is obviously reacting to the acid, uh, is forming much of the cementing material. So a lot of the chunks are cemented with calcite. If we hit some of these particles here, we don't get a reaction because they are not a calcite rich rock. Uh, and then this is a sandstone, kind of a similar looking thing, more fine grain, kind of feels rough to the touch, but you hit it with acid and you get a reaction. And if you watch the reaction closely, a lot of times what you can see is that it's fizzing around the grains rather than uh, into the grains themselves. And that lets you again know that it's Calcite is the cementing agent and not what the particles are made out of. Okay, so to wrap up, what about metamorphic rocks? Well, when we take limestones and they get, they get metamorphosed, that creates a metamorphic rock called marble. So just like limestone, marble is made out of 100% calcite. It's just recrystallized calcite. And so this is our primary metamorphic rock that's made out of uh, calcite. There's a few others that can have cal calcite in them as well. It of course can be a vein material as well in metamorphic rocks, kind of cutting through the rocks. Um, and for now, I just have one good sample of marble to show you. So you can see that this is a crystalline rock. It's made out of calcite, but unlike you know the sedimentary rocks where we had uh, either organisms or 
particles uh, with calcite. This is recrystallized calcite. So all this calcite has been completely recrystallized because of the heat and pressure of metamorphism. Sure enough, it fizzes. The whole thing is calcite. So this would be, this would be a marble. So there you go. So quick crash course in calcite and a couple of the carbonate minerals. Hope uh, you enjoyed that. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we do next time. Haven't decided, might throw a couple more minerals your way, uh, but I think I've covered some of the more essential ones that are helpful in terms of uh, identifying rocks. A lot of the other minerals we might cover are of interest, and of course there's thousands of minerals out there. Um, so we'll see, I'm just kind of anxious to get to the rocks because I think that's where, um, where a lot of you might find the most uh, usefulness of these videos is is looking at rock types and being able to identify your own rocks on your own adventures and such so so for now uh we'll leave it at that and a fun video on calcite appreciate everyone's support and watching the video and subscribing and doing all the shares and likes and all those good things that keep us rolling so thanks so much and have a great one